November is the month set aside for us to pray for the souls in purgatory. Yeah, I know, the month's almost over, and I should have done this video a few weeks ago. I was planning on doing it then, but other things seemed more pressing, and the month got away from me. So, better late than never. Even though there's only about a week left, there's still a lot we can do to help the poor souls. And of course, we need to pray for the souls in purgatory year-round. The month of November is there to remind us. Now, I have a series on purgatory and indulgences, a playlist, on my channel, so I'm not going to go into the theology. But if you want a detailed defense and explanation of purgatory and indulgences, check out that series. I go into what the church actually teaches, dispelling the Protestant distortions, show through the early church fathers that not only was purgatory a belief in the beginning of Christianity, but it actually goes back to Judaism. I also go through all the scriptural support for purgatory and indulgences, and there's a lot more than you probably think there is. Way more than just 2 Maccabees 12.46, which says, It is therefore a holy and wholesome thought to pray for the dead, that they may be loosed from their sins. Oh, and by the way, Protestants, before you make disparaging comments about purgatory and indulgences on this video, watch the series. I answer all the objections. If you leave comments and I can tell you haven't watched that series, I'm going to delete them and all your efforts will be for nothing. The same goes for comments claiming 2 Maccabees was added to the Bible by the Catholic Church. Watch my video titled, Why Catholics Have Seven More Books on YouTube, or Christians, Your Bible's Missing a Few Books on BitChute. I show that it was the Protestants that removed those books from the Bible, not Catholics that added them. Comment without watching it, and I'll just delete them. Okay, I'm done plugging my videos, so let's get to it. Let's talk indulgences. To gain an indulgence, you must be in a state of grace. Indulgences can be gained for yourself or for the souls in purgatory. Indulgences do not forgive sins. They get rid of the punishment due to sin one must endure in purgatory before entering heaven. They can be partial, meaning part of the debt is fulfilled, or plenary, meaning all of the debt is fulfilled. To gain a plenary indulgence, you must pray for the Pope's intentions, receive communion, go to confession, one confession can cover all plenary indulgences for 20 days before or after the confession and be detached from all sin, including venial sin. If one of these conditions is missing, it's reduced to a partial indulgence. You can gain one plenary indulgence per day, except on the day that you die, you can gain the death indulgence and avoid purgatory altogether. You can gain unlimited partial indulgences every day. You must intend to gain the indulgence. It doesn't have to be explicit. It can be general. So here's what you can do to help the souls in purgatory. Every morning, make an offering and form the intention to receive indulgences. You can say something like, Lord, I offer all my prayers, works, joys, and sufferings of this day through the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your Sacred Heart, and the sacrifice of the Holy Mass for the holy souls in purgatory. I intend to receive all of the indulgences attached to anything that I do that has an indulgence attached to it and give them to the holy souls in purgatory or a particular soul. In November, a plenary indulgence is granted to anyone who visits a cemetery and says a prayer for the dead, if even mentally. It is applicable only to the souls in purgatory, from the 1st to the 8th of the month. However, this year, it was extended to the whole month. Year-round, it is a partial indulgence. So, go to a cemetery every day for the rest of the month. It'll only take a few minutes and gain at least a partial indulgence. Then, this weekend, go to confession, and the day you go to Mass, offer up a plenary indulgence for a soul in purgatory and visit a cemetery. You can also pray the rosary for the holy souls in purgatory. A plenary indulgence is offered for praying five decades of the rosary in a church, a family setting, or pious association. Otherwise, it's partial. You also get indulgences for crossing yourself, devout use of a blessed article, the meditation, saying the Apostles' Creed, and saying the Hail Holy Queen. That's six indulgences just for saying five decades of the rosary. Also, since it is the year of St. Joseph, a plenary indulgence is offered for performing one of the spiritual acts of mercy. One of those acts is praying for the dead. Because of the pandemic, a plenary indulgence is offered to anyone who prays the rosary or the chaplet of divine mercy to employ from Almighty God the end of the pandemic, relief for those who are afflicted, and eternal salvation for those whom the Lord has called to himself. We can also take advantage of the plenary indulgences offered for the year of St. Joseph, which ends December 8th. One thing that I can say about Pope Francis is he is indulgence happy, and that is no more evident than the year of St. Joseph. Plenary indulgences are offered if you meditate for at least 30 minutes on the Our Father, participate in a spiritual retreat, 
of at least one day that includes a meditation on St. Joseph, perform a corporal or spiritual work of mercy, recite the Holy Rosary in families and between husbands and wives, entrust your daily work to the protection of St. Joseph, and to all believers who invoke with their prayers the intercession of St. Joseph, or pray the litany of St. Joseph, or pray any lawfully approved prayer or act of piety in honor of St. Joseph, for example, to you, O blessed Joseph. Other plenary indulgences that we can earn that are not special, they're there all the time, is we can do the Stations of the Cross, Eucharistic Adoration for at least 30 minutes, read the Bible for at least 30 minutes, less than 30 minutes of these would be a partial indulgence. Other partial indulgences we can do, kiss your brown scapular or cross, cross yourself, use holy water, pray the Requiem prayer, which is eternal rest, grant unto them, O Lord, let perpetual light shine upon them, may they rest in peace. So as you can see, there are numerous easy things that we can do to gain indulgences for the holy souls in purgatory. We can also pray the prayer of St. Gertrude. Eternal Father, I offer you the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the Masses said throughout the world today for the holy souls in purgatory. Jesus told St. Gertrude, many souls are released from purgatory when this prayer is said sincerely. Of course, nothing is more effective than having Masses offered for the holy souls in purgatory. So why pray for the holy souls in purgatory? When we pray for the souls in purgatory, they will be eternally grateful and intercede for us when it is our turn to go through purgatory. Read the parable of the dishonest steward found in Luke chapter 16, 1 through 13. The master calls in his steward to give an account of all his debts. The steward had been dishonest with the master's money and afraid he would get fired, he begins canceling the debts of the master's debtors so they will help him after he gets let go. When the master hears of this, he is pleased with the steward. And the moral of the story is, make friends for yourself by means of unrighteous mammon so that when it fails, they may receive you into eternal habitations. St. Francis de Sales, as well as St. Ambrose and Augustine, understood this parable to be about giving alms on behalf of the dead in purgatory, canceling their debt with earthly money, which is always dishonest. That's why the master was pleased with the steward canceling the debts of others. God is pleased when we cancel the debt of those in purgatory, and they become grateful friends and advocate for us. So who should we pray for? Should we only pray for deceased Catholics? Assume everyone you know who has died is in purgatory. Protestants can be saved. I'm not saying they're all saved or anything like that, but I personally believe it is a lot more than some others do. And they're probably in purgatory. And they're abandoned. None of their family or friends are praying for them. According to divine mercy, when someone dies, Jesus comes to them three times and gives them three opportunities to be saved. When we pray the chaplet of divine mercy, we can help that person say yes and be saved. And since God exists outside of time, we can still do this even years after they have died, and God will apply that prayer to the moment that they die. This is according to Father Chris Alar. So, when someone I know dies, I go to confession to make sure that I'm in a state of grace, pray a chaplet of divine mercy for their salvation, and start earning them indulgences, regardless of whether they were Catholic or not, regardless of how they died, even if they committed suicide. When you start praying regularly for the souls in purgatory, you're going to start getting indications of who to pray for. I'm not saying you're going to start getting visits from them like some of the mystics did in the past. It'll be more subtle. You'll start dreaming of deceased people, for instance. Anytime I've dreamed of someone who has died, I assume that they are trying to tell me that they need prayers. And the reason for this is because of a dream I had of a deceased person. I used to keep a list of the people that I knew who had died. Every morning I would check the list, and whoever's name was next on the list, I would pray a rosary for them. I also had another column for indulgences, and I'd go down that list, and whoever's next would get an indulgence whenever I would go to Mass. Sometimes I would get lazy and not check the list, sometimes for months at a time, and just say, Lord, I offer this for whatever soul you want. Well, at one point, I decided I was going to revamp the list and take people off there that were not related to me. And it had been about a month and a half since I'd looked at this list, and I had no idea where I was on the list. Well, the night before I had planned to do this, I had a dream of a girl that I went to high school with who had committed suicide. In the dream, we were riding in the car. It was dark and raining out. She was driving and I was in the passenger seat. We were talking, just doing small talk. And when she stopped the car to let me out, she looked at me and she said, don't change the list until I've had my turn. I've been waiting a long time for this and I'm next. Well, I woke up the next morning and like I said, I had no idea where I was on the list and I checked it and sure enough, she was next on the list to get an indulgence. I have no doubt in my mind that that was actually her trying to get my attention 
telling me that she needs prayers. And even now, I, periodically, I'll just pray rosary or earn an indulgence for her. She was not Catholic, and she committed suicide. So we can't judge. Until my next video, God bless.